Hello everybody, welcome to the next section on this um, Edna Mae Burnham book, Step 1 Piano Course. Um, we left off last time on page 23, and um, so uh, we're going to just jump right in today. Thank you for dropping by, I sure appreciate you uh, you're watching my videos and your support and all that good stuff. Um, feel free to leave any comments. Uh, this whole piano teaching thing is something new for me, so um, I mean, I've been doing it in, in real life, but uh, not online. Um, so it's just something new since uh, the pandemic started. So um, <clears throat> we'll see what happens. So as I said, let me jump in here real quick. So page 24. Um, they're starting off with uh, time signatures. 2, 4, 3, 4, and 4, 4. So 2, 4 just has 2 beats per measure. 3, 4 has 3 beats per measure. And, and with 3, 4, you have to really be careful with that, as you'll see in these tunes that are coming up. You really got to get that 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So you really have to get that, that waltz feel for it to, to sound right. Um, so, and 4-4 four, four is pretty much, we, that's what we've been doing most of the songs, it's 4 beats per measure. Um, <clears throat> this particular page right here is important, um, uh, where we have uh, these, uh, the dotted half note. So we, we learned that the half note lasts for two beats. So now, um, when it has this little dot up next to it, that means um, it's, you're going to cut that in half, so half, of, of two is one, and then we're going to add that back, so you end up with three beats right there. So just remember the dotted half note gets three beats, and I'll show you that as, as we go through here. Okay, and um, and again, I'm not going to go really slow with these. I think that this book it's it's pretty self-explanatory. So um, please leave a message if you get confused with something. Um, I, I think just uh, I'm going to go through and just point out some of the important things that uh, um, that you will probably need to know. And then, uh, like I said, as I get farther into other um, videos and and farther along in the books, we'll we'll stop and and analyze the pieces a little bit more. Okay, so North Wind, um, we're starting off on on the middle C with the left hand. Okay. And so you always want to kind of have your fingers in position. You know, make sure your your um, your fingers aren't aren't flat, okay? Um, so they want to be arched like in a, in a kind of like in a claw, okay? So again, you got you have to get that one, two, three. One, two, three. And notice that. All the measures have to add up to three. Okay, so if we're in three, four, all these notes add up to three. And so at the very last measure, they have that dotted half note. So you can see if they didn't have that dot there, then it wouldn't be correct musically. So that measure has to equal three. So every measure has to add up. So I'll do that one more time. So again, we want to get that beat. One, two, three. And um, I think these next few pages, we don't have any new notes other than what we've learned uh, previously. So again, now swimming pool, one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, you'll notice in this particular piece, um, you know, we've played the, the B and the D together. Remember we had the, the bird and the dog singing together. Now look at here, we have the C and the E playing together, okay? Okay, maybe that's the cat and the elephant, <laughs> okay? Or whatever, whatever you wanna do, okay? So um, I'll do that for you one more time. Two, three. Okay, um, ice cream. Again, you'll notice we were still in three four, um, 
And I guess, you know, when you think about it, since that, uh, that dotted half note gets three beats, uh, I guess that's why we're, they're having a run on these songs in 3, 4, so you can get some use out of it. One, two, three. Okay, um, hot cross buns. Now we're back into 4-4. Four, four. Um, there's really not too much for me to tell you on these so far other than just, you know, watch your, uh, the timing on that with the dotted half notes. Okay, so hot cross buns. Um, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, um, just slipping along here. Okay, now we come to the tie. Um, and I'm hoping you're able to read this book. I don't know if my lighting uh, in here is going to be good enough. But uh, the tie, um, let me just read this, okay? So, so when the same note is pictured two times and they're tied together with a curved line um, like this, and you can see that they're, they're they're both the same note, so that's very important, okay? Um, that's called the tie. So remember, you know, if it was like a different note, if it went from, say, C to a D, that would be more of like, that would be like a slur, okay? Um, so this one, it's the same note, it's going to tie it. So it's going to be the value of both notes together. So when this happens, you must play the first note and hold the second note and count it. So this would be one, two, one, two, okay? One, two, three, four. If you were in four, four time, um, well, this would be one, two, three, four. Same thing. It says, do not lift your hand and play the second or tied note again. So then here are some ties. So in two, four, this would be one, two. Um, in four, four, one, two, three, four, three, four, one, two, three. And um, again, notice um, how each measure has to add up to three, okay? And then the last one, um, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, then one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's how that would be played, and I'll go ahead and play a couple of these. I'm gonna just kinda of go through and do most of these, these songs in this book, that way if you're um, like a real beginner, you'll at least know how the song goes. Um, so now we're in 2-4, which is my least favorite time signature. 1-2-1-2 Okay. On to Goldfish. Let's see here. Um, yeah, you have to watch out for songs that are in 2-4. I bought like a, a really cool version of, of uh, I heard a, a version of Stairway to Heaven. And I got the music for it. When it when it arrived, it was uh, it, the whole thing was in two four and really 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 hard to read. So I don't know. I'm not really a fan of that for some reason. Um, but I guess that's just personal taste. Okay, so let's do Goldfish again. Nothing new. We're still dealing with the the same notes. We do have a tie up here. Um, the 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 last measures of each line there. So we have. Okay, um, I'm going to move on to the next one. We're in three, four, snowy white clouds. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, two, three, one, two, three, two, three, one, two, three. Now at this point, I would suggest that you get used to doing the, this uh, little thing, or this can trouble some students. Um, if you're really new at this, so it can be confusing. Notice we did the B and D routine. You're pretty good at that probably by now. And notice how we're using our thumb and our third finger for the C and the E. So get used to going back and forth like this. You can 
because this is going to happen a lot. So you want to get used to doing that um, and actually recognizing the, those shapes, how they, how they fit together. Okay, so now we're coming to rests. Um, so we have the quarter rest, which rests for one beat. Um, and you'll see this little, this little squiggly line here. I don't know if this is worth me lifting the book up every time. I might just have to, to maybe get some diagrams. Um, but hopefully you have this book. Um, maybe I just might do this for the first first book. Then I figure if you're on to book two, you've probably got the. Um, you're probably involved enough to have purchased the books. So the and these books are, are well worth. It. They're not that expensive, so you really don't have anything to lose. Okay, so the quarter rests it rests for one beat. So um, on jump rope, again we're starting with our B and our D. Okay, you can see we're still in the play yard. Remember the B and D is in the play yard. So we have one, two, three, rest. Two, three, rest. One, two, three, four. See, and there's that C and that E. Okay, now on hopscotch, um, they're breaking it up a little bit. Um, <clears throat> This one is actually pretty easy to read if you just read it across, so don't let all the rest scare you. It's just, once again, notice how each measure has to add to four, okay? You have rest, two, rest, four. Then a whole note for four beats, then one, two, three, four. So they have to put those rests in there so that those measures equal four, okay? So we have two, three, four. Okay, that's all there is to it. Okay, and then um, we have some more rests. We have um, the half rest. Um, and you'll, ha you'll notice with the half rest that it sticks up on the line like a little hat, okay? Um, that gets two beats, okay, if you can see that. Um, so think of it as being lighter, so it, it, it only gets two beats because the whole rest is going to hang down from the line, okay? So think of the half rest, looks like a hat, you know, H for half, H for hat, okay? So that's the half rest that sits in the middle line of each staff, okay? And so now let's do this next piece. Um, and again, if you just read your music from left to right, it's all going to equal out anyways, but... Um, That's the rocking chair. Okay, all the measures are adding up to four. Now let's do bumpy streets. Okay. And these songs are kept, I think, purposely short because it gives you like a lot of variety uh, to where you don't end up memorizing the notes because what happens after a while, I mean, you do eventually want to memorize these notes. You want to be able to do this, this book pretty quickly, but you always have to move on the new pieces so you're, you're constantly reading. Okay, so now here's the whole rest, and you can see what I was talking about, how it hangs down from the line. Okay, it's heavier. So this kind of rest gets four counts when playing in 4-4 four, four time. It fills the whole measure. Notice that it hangs down from the line. When playing in 3-4, the same kind of rest gets three counts. So you have to remember that, that that rest can either be for four beats or three beats, okay? It's very unique in, in that aspect, okay? So let's go back and we'll do uh, um, sheep. So we're, uh, again, we're in 4-4. Four, four. Okay. Uh, wheels, again, one, two, three, one, two, three. A mailman um, is kind of kind of long and boring and has lots of rest. I'll go ahead and do this for you though. Okay, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, rest, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, rest, two, three, four, two, three, four, rest, two, three, four. Okay? 
That's Mailman. Okay, finally we're getting to a, to a new note here. Um, okay, so now we have the F note, okay? So we did E, so F is going to be um, just to the left of your three black notes, okay? So I would go through and play all your F notes, okay? Okay. Um, and F is going to be for face. You've probably heard if you've played before that uh, the, the spaces, we have four spaces and five lines. Um, so we're going to have face and the space. That's a good way to remember that, face and the space. And that first space is F, okay? Um, so uh, and again, we play that with our fourth finger. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the night. One, two. It's pretty much the same thing. We're just using that uh, the F note that we just learned. Two, three, four. Okay, so now you notice that we did, um, we had the, um, the F and the B. That's kind of a different one too. So we're we're playing that that B note along with the with the D. We also have the F. We can play with it. This ends up making a G seventh chord. Is what this is. Um, um, I won't go into it too much in, in this book, but as we go farther along, we're going to start looking at why we're playing the notes and see how they fit into the chords. Um, okay, so. Again, just be aware of that. Again, you want to do lots of repetition on these. Rockabye Dolly, um, three, four, one, two, three. Okay. Now we have another note, is which is the G going down. Okay, so notice we went up to our fourth finger to the F, we went down to our fourth finger, we have a G. And you'll have to see, that one's a little bit trickier to remember because it's um, kind of like the A, it's, it's like, you know, in the middle of these three, or not in the middle, but um, towards the end of these three notes, but uh, so you'll have to memorize where that's at. Um, so that's the G. Um, and I'll tell you something on, on this right here that, that might help. Again, if you're if you're a beginner or if you've played before, just ignore my little um, silly um, silly memory tricks here. Um, so the G, you'll notice that this is a bass clef, and where these two dots are, um, bass clef is known as the F clef, and this that's why this line right here runs right through those two dots. Okay. Um, don't get that confused with a repeat though, okay? Sometimes that can, can confuse you. So this dot, this note, where this um, first dot, that note's going to be E when we get to it, okay? So you can think of dot, the girl's name, dot E, dot E, and this could be dot G, okay? Now, it doesn't make much sense, but it's really easy to, to remember if you do that. And it's also the top space, okay? Um, so. You have to remember that that very top space on the bass clef is the G, okay? Or maybe you're talking to the girl, her name is Dot, and you say, Dot, G, okay? Um, think of it that way. Anything you can do to, to connect with those notes, okay? So let's try this new G note out now. This one is hard for everybody because 
uh, for some reason when you kind of know a song, it, 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 uh, it gets confusing because you've heard it in your head and this arrangement is just a little bit different, enough to throw you off. It seems to, to throw everyone off. Uh, let me give this a try. Um, the G note. Okay, and, and we talked earlier, I want to point this out to you uh, again. So notice that the treble clef is actually known as G clef, and you can see where this little um, thing circles right around that G note, okay? You can kind of think of that as an anchor point too, okay? The G and then the F when we get to the F, these two dots outline the, the F note, we'll be getting to that. So um, anyways, that's a uh, um, a good way to remember where the G is, like I said, that's think of that as an anchor point, okay? Because um, if you know certain notes, you can kind of um, interpolate where where the other ones are. Um, so, so now we've we've covered um, all five notes of the scale, okay? The first five notes, okay? Okay, so here we go with the hills, okay? TV antennas. Two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay. Mary had a little lamb. Um, not too much to say about that. They're just, you know, introducing the, the notes we've learned. Actually, you know, I was I kind of lost track of all, while I was playing there as I was thinking of what I was going to tell you. It's like this is kind of what makes it boring when you're first learning how to play piano is because you're playing some of these silly nursery rhyme songs. Um, you just have to kind of put up with that, you know. And I like to to try to get you playing more interesting pieces as soon as possible. Um, but you know, first we'll you know we have to bear with these for the first few books. Two children humming, not much to talk about on this one. Okay, um, sunset. I'm just zipping through these. You can play these slower, like when you're first learning them. It's always best to play slow um, until you get the hang of it. Um, I'm, I'm going to skip these little exercises, but you, you should go through and do these. Connect the fish, um, pennies in a purse. This, these are all pretty good exercises. Okay, so let's just zip through these last few songs, and we'll be done with this with this video um, or this lesson. Okay, so. Um, little white chickens were in 4-4. Four, four. Um, yeah, I almost played that with my left hand. You have to be, you have to watch out when you're doing this. It's it's not necessarily right or wrong, but you want to get used to associating your right hand when it's on that um, on the treble clef. I know some students will start playing different hands. It, it's okay, technically it, it's correct, but um, you want to get used to using the same fingering all the time, okay? 
Um, we'll try to be as consistent as possible. Okay, so let's go to this next one here. So that's south wind, and then the last one is going to be highway, highways. Okay, so that's highways, and then that's it for book one. Um, you want to go through and do this, this final checkup. Um, this should be pretty straightforward if you've gone through the book. Um, and again, I just kind of zipped through this book because it's, uh, um, I don't think it's that hard. I mean, I, and, and if you're like a, um, a complete beginner, then I understand it could be probably quite the challenge, but no worries. Um, Keep working at it, and if you have any questions, feel free to, to send me a message or, uh, or email me or whatever, and, uh, and we can take this thing apart and study a little bit more. But uh, just you want to take it slow. I just went fast so that you can have a reference of how those songs are played. Um, but uh, we'll, um, that's book one, and I'll go through and probably do the, the pieces to play. Again, probably just zip through that really quick. And then when we get to book two and some of the other lessons, they'll you know, I'll spend a little bit more time in depth on, uh, on the material, but uh, um, like right now, this just isn't that complicated, I don't think. <laughs> Hopefully, um, if I totally lost you, then I'm being a, a bad instructor already, but uh, like I said, you can contact me. Okay, folks, thank you so much. I sure appreciate it, and thank you for dropping by the website, and appreciate your support and all that good stuff, and uh, we will see you in the next lesson, hopefully. Okay, bye-bye.